Hey there class, today we are going to play around more with QGIS. So let's first add in our CSV file for the lights out. So let's go to layer, add layer, the delimited text layer. And we'll navigate over to that. Where we're holding our ENST 456 folder and the data sets and the UMD, the lights out UMD file. And we will tell it longitude as X, latitude as Y. We will add it. And first thing we'll do is right click in that layer, set coordinate reference system, set CRS. And this was originally the WGS84. It has not been projected yet. And the datum was WGS84. Now the first thing we want to do is save it, save these features as a shapefile before we do anything else. So again, let's navigate to that data set folder. Let's call it LOUMD underscore export and save. All right, now we want to project it. So let's go to processing so we can open up that toolbox. Let's type in project and we'll find under a vector because now we've saved it as a vector, shapefiles are vectors. So under vector general, we can click on reproject layer. We wanna make sure we navigate to the exported shapefile. For our target coordinate reference system, now we want it as projected into UTM zone 18. So we can start to type in UTM, get to UTM space zone, and we'll see two options. Either the datum could be set on WGS84 or NAD83. Obviously, we will select WGS84 and hit OK. We want to save that layer again to that data sets file or subfolder. Let's call it LOUMD. Now let's do underscore UTM. So we remember this is our shape file that's been projected into UTMs. We hit run and close. Now, just for good measure, let's remove the layers that we do not need. So we don't need that originally exported shapefile and we also don't need the CSV file. So we're gonna remove both of those. So we just have lights out UMD. So there's a few things we're gonna play with. So under vector, let's go to geoprocessing tools. Let's say we are interested in looking at a 50 meter buffer. So we're gonna add 50 meters around every single one of these locations. So under vector, geoprocessing tools, let's go to buffer. And for that input layer, we'll make sure we select our UTM shapefile layer of those points. For distance, let's say, make sure we're in meters. Let's increase this to 50. For segments, let's make this more like 25 to help it be more rounded. And then for location to save it, save this layer, we'll go to those three dots, save to file. Again, let's save it to that data sets folder. And now let's call it LOUMD underscore 50M buff. And let's hit save and run. So now it's those same exact points, just we have that 50 meter buffer and we can drag this below so we can see the points plus the 50 meter buffer around each point. All right, let's also add in that layer, the University of Maryland boundary that we created in Google Earth. Let's go to layer, add layer, add vector, because remember shapes, lines, polygons are vectors. Let's go to that University of Maryland boundary, KML shape that we turned into a shape file. So this is the boundary that we previously created. And let's say we're interested in seeing, uh, in performing a count, how many of these points that we saw 
lie within our boundary. So our results may differ slightly depending on how um, we drew our boundary. But let's say that's our, our question is how many of these points are within my boundary? So we'll go to vector. At analysis tools, count points in polygon. We will click on that. For the polygon, that would be the University of Maryland boundary. For points, let's say we want those, the lights out UMD as our points. And the count, let's save this to a file. Let's keep it as our data set. I'm gonna call it L-O-U-M-D underscore points. And let's hit save and run. Now let's right click on this points shapefile, open attribute, and we will scroll to find our answer. So there were 33 points within our shapefile, but is that all of them? So let's go back to that UTM file, go right click on it, go to open attribute table. And here we see there's 34 points. So not every single point was within our boundary. And we see that when we zoom, when we right click and zoom to layer, we do see that there is this one point right here that was not counted. So that's just a quick way to count points within a certain area that you're interested in, as long as you have a polygon um, or some kind of shape of interest. That's a fun tool you can do quickly. Now let's say you are interested in running statistics of some kind of field. So let's look again at our attribute table. So right click, open attribute table. We have fields such as date, latitude, longitude, location, so the name of the building, and the bird species. So let's say we want to run um, the mean value. What was the mean longitude of our birds that collided with buildings? So we go to vector, analysis tools, basic statistics for fields. And we tell it the correct layer, so that UTM projected layer. And let's say we're interested in the longitude. So the field to calculate our statistics on is longitude. And let's save this file within our data set folder. And let's call it L-O-U-M-D underscore long, long for longitude underscore stats. And we're gonna save it, we're gonna run it. And it's gonna pull up with this path right here, this pathway. Let me move myself out of the way. So you can click on this pathway right here that pops up with our result. And we see the mean was negative uh, 76.946. So that was uh, west of the prime meridian. So here are our values. So it popped up in this pathway over here. Okay, so now let's say we're interested in the points again. Let's zoom to all the points. Let's, let's see that, um, let's say we're interested in looking at the distribution of all these locations. Are they clumped in certain areas? or are they randomly dispersed, or are they evenly dispersed? So to figure that out, we're gonna go to vector, analysis tools, nearest neighbor analysis. We will keep our UTM projected. So it has to be a projected file. So we will make sure we navigate to our projected file and for nearest neighbor, we're going to save the results to our data sets. And let's call it L-O-U-M-D underscore neighbor. 
And this is also going to, when it runs, it's going to save as this pathway over here, this HTML file. So let's click on that and see our results. All right. So it is comparing the locations with um, expected random locations to see that uh, distribution, how it compares between each point. So it's saying that the nearest neighbor index is 0 0.3098. Now let's talk a little bit about these, these results. So if our index is much less than one, then we see it as clustered. If it's right around one, then we see it as randomly located. And if it's much larger than one, then we see it as evenly dispersed. So in this case, it's much, it's much less than one. So we're seeing these results as being clustered rather than random. And our z-score, so it's not a p-value, it's a, it's a z-score. And we're looking at the absolute value of the z-score. So the larger the absolute value, the more confident we are that these were statistically significant. So if we had a z-score really, really small in um, like the tenths or a hundredths, um, we wouldn't feel very confident about it. But as we get larger and larger in absolute value, then we get more confident. So in this case, we see that our nearest neighbor is indicating these are uh, clumped rather than randomly distributed. And we, we do see that. We do see some clumping going on in a few different sections. And we can also run a heat map to see where these um, areas of high density are. So if we type in heat map in our toolbox, we can click on that. We make sure we load in that projected layer. We'll keep that kernel shape for the heat map. Let's save that again to the data sets. Let's call it L-O-U-M-D underscore heat. And let's run that. Okay, and again, it also notices this clumping. So it's seeing these, um, or it's displaying the bright white areas as indicating areas with uh, a lot of uh, locations. So the dark areas are representing more independent locations, whereas the whiter we get, or the brighter we get, that's indicating um, a larger density of these locations. So that's just a few other things we can do with QGIS. I will give you another data set to play with, and then you can uh, work through these steps to be able to answer the quiz and discussion.